Hey everyone, how you doing? Welcome to another episode of Hockey on the Spot with Brandon Barenfeld. I'm Brandon Barenfeld. Thank you for joining me. <clears throat> this is episode 71 of Hockey on the Spot. I was sorry I was unable to do an episode yesterday. I have been was very busy yesterday, um, but I am back today, and today I will be doing two episodes, starting with an episode from the updates from two days ago, as well as the six games from two days ago. So let's zoom right through the updates real fast. Um, the Detroit Red Wings have activated goaltender Jonas Gustafsson from IR, um, which is good news for them because they need their backup goaltender back. Um, uh, the Washington Capitals have recalled defenseman Nate Schmidt from the American Hockey League, Hershey Bears, and reassigned defenseman Connor Carrick and center Michael Latta. Those two players had been solid for them, but especially Connor Carrick, he is going to be a good, solid player in the NHL one day, but um, he they they needed a new look, the um, the, the uh, Washington Capitals, and Nate Schmidt is a very capable uh, defenseman, I believe, and they, he's another one who is going to be a very good player for them in the future. Um, and he's going to be another really good player for them in the future. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, Colorado Avalanche have placed defenseman Matt Hunwick on waivers. Um, they have their defense core set pretty much, and so they really do not have that many plans for him in their future. Formerly a very good defenseman for the Boston Bruins. Now is just since going to the Colorado Avalanche has not been that great. The Detroit Red Wings have called forward, called up forward Luke Glendening from the Grand Rapids Griffins and have reassigned Corey Emerton and goaltender Peter Morozik. Corey Emerton is a player who they've been trying to trade for a little while, and you can expect that at some point he will be traded and he'll be on a team where he can thrive as a solid fourth line center. <laughs> The Phoenix Coyotes have recalled Brandon Yip from the Portland Pirates and have reassigned Chris Summers, who cleared waivers. Um, <laughs> so that's that's big news. Um, the NHL has suspended Vancouver Canucks defenseman Alex Edler for three games for his hit on San Jose Sharks forward Thomas Hurdle. Um, the Columbus Blue Jackets have recalled forward Ryan Craig from the Springfield Falcons and have reassigned defenseman Tim Erickson to the Springfield. Uh, Tim Erickson, obviously not exactly ready to play in the NHL just yet. The Tampa Bay Lightning have recalled goaltender Cedric Dan from the Syracuse Crunch. The Florida Panthers have reassigned for Joey Crabb to the San Antonio Rampage of the American Hockey League. The P Portland Pirates, AHL affiliate of the Phoenix Coyotes, have shot, signed the former Phoenix forward Gilbert Brule to a professional tryout contract. The Toronto Maple Leafs have reassigned defenseman T.J. Brennan to the Toronto Marlies and have assigned a and goaltender Christopher Gibson to the Orlando Solar Bears of the East Coast Hockey League. The Edmonton Oilers have reassigned defenseman Brandon Davidson to the Oklahoma City Barons. <laughs> um, Buffalo Sabres forward Patrick Coletta is suspended pending his hearing on Tuesday. With the NHL Player Safety Department, it's believed that Coletta will face a three to five game suspension following his hearing Tuesday for his elbow to Blue Jackets defenseman Jack Johnson's head. Um, <coughs> um, so for him, uh, Patrick Coletta, he got into some trouble last year for a hit on Brad Richards, and so Brendan Shanahan, watching him very closely, and already has developed the bet, and those two already developed the bad reputation with each other. And it's going to be very interesting to see what's going to happen. <coughs> Philadelphia Flyers GM Paul Holmgren said that Vinny LeCavalier and Scott, Scott Hartnell are both out for at least a week. Um, so, you know, they'll both be out for at least a week, which is a real, uh, you know, which, which is a bit, which does hurt their team a little bit. In exchange, they have recalled forwards Mike Raffle and... Raffle and Ty McGinn from the Adirondack Fandoms to replace those two. Um, those two 
are go are going to be solid players in the NHL. And for Mike Roffel, he has a big chance to represent Team Austria in the Winter Olympics. And finally, the Dallas Stars have recalled goaltender Jack Campbell from the American Hockey League's Texas Stars as goaltender Kari Letton in his day-to-day -day with a lower body injury. Um, so that's some big, pretty big news there. And that's all the updates for now. So that is all the updates from a couple days ago. So let's get to the games now, starting with the Phoenix Coyotes and the Philadelphia Flyers. This is the game that both LeCavalier and Hartnell got hurt. Phoenix coming up with a big win, final score of 2-1 to one on the road. road. <laughs> um, a game that was all about the goaltending. Um, for the Phoenix Coyotes, for the Phoenix Coyotes, their goals coming from defenseman Derek Morris, assisted by T Tim Kennedy and Paul Bissonette. Tim Kennedy getting his first point in a Phoenix Coyote sweater. And for Paul Bissonette, his second game coming back from what was originally going to be a 10-game suspension, but was reduced to three games. And then on the power play, Oliver ekman Larson scored the game winner, assisted by Mike Ribeiro and Martin Hansel. Um, Thomas Grice getting his first career start as a Phoenix Coyote and getting his first career win as a Phoenix Coyote. Uh, 36 saves on 37 shots and 973 save percentage. And for the Philadelphia Flyers, Maxim Talbot getting his first of the year for their only goal, assisted by Zach Ronaldo and Sean Couturier. Steve Mason would get the starting goal, and he was actually really good too, just not good enough to get the win. 29 saves and 31 shots and 935 save percentage. Um, and from the Philadelphia Flyers standpoint of things, lots of penalty minutes. For t Zach Ronaldo, who had an assist in the game, had 11 minutes in penalties, while Andre Mazaros, a defenseman who they have been trying to trade, had 14 minutes in penalties. So we'll see what happens there. <laughs> yeah, they, this will probably influence the idea of trading him a little bit. <laughs> but congratulations to the Phoenix Coyotes. Next, we have the Los Angeles Kings and the Carolina Hurricanes in Carolina. <laughs> Really close and crazy game, but the final score, 2-1 to one in the shootout in favor of the L.A. Kings. Um, both goals coming in the third period, just <laughs> under a minute apart, and both goals coming on a Carolina Hurricanes power play, which means, you guessed it, the L.A. Kings goal was a shorthanded goal. And that shorthanded goal coming from Dwight King, his first of the year, unassisted. And then, of course, on that same power play, not even a minute later, Jeff Skinner would get his first of the year, assisted by Andre Sequeira and Nathan Gerby, as he continues to be hot. In the shootout, Jeff Carter would score the shootout winner and the only shootout goal. Andre Kopitar was the other skater for them. They did not have to use a third. Carolina, of course, would use three. Jeff Skinner, Alexander Semin, and Nathan Gerby. They could not win it, of course. The goaltending was very good in this game. I mean, Cam, for the, for the LA Kings, Jonathan Quick made 27 saves and 28 shots and 964 save percentage. He was absolutely brilliant. As was Cam Ward. Cam Ward, though, has yet to get a win up on the board, but he was brilliant in this game. 36 saves and 37 shots, a 973 save percentage. If it weren't for him, the game, the score would have been much worse than it really w it was. The score would have been much, much different. So congratulations to the Los Angeles Kings. <laughs> Next, we have the Pittsburgh Penguins and the Florida Panthers. Jeff Zatkoff getting his first career NHL start, unfortunately, did not go well. 6-3 to three the final score in Florida in favor of the Panthers. 6-3. Uh, <laughs> Brad Boys would get the scoring started. He had two goals in the game, the first and the last goal, assisted by Thomas Fleischman. Then, after the Pittsburgh Penguins tied it at one, Chris Versteeg would score his first of the year, assisted by Scott Gomez and Sean Mathias. Then the Pens would tie it at two at the end of the first, 
before Jonathan Huberdeau would score a power play goal in the second, assisted by Chris Versteeg and Thomas Fleischmann. Following that, Alexander Barkov would get his second of the year on a power play, unassisted. <laughs> and then in the third period, they got two goals. Thomas Fleischmann would go on to would, would score his first of the year, assisted by Alexander Barkov and Brad Boys. And then Brad Boys would score his second of the game, assisted by Alexander Barkov and Thomas Fleischmann. But <sighs> Jacob Markstrom would get the start in goal with Scott Clemenson as his backup. Remember, Tim Thomas is out and with an injury, and he was very good. 36 saves and 39 shots and 923 save percentage. And But the big story for the Florida Panthers, lots of guys with multi-point performances. Thomas Fleischman, most notable, the most notable of all, a goal and three assists. A four-point night for him and a plus-three rating, six shots on goal. Well-deserving of the first star. Um... Alexander Barkov, a goal and two assists for three combined for three points, a plus three as well. Brad Boys, a two goals and one assist, a plus two. Surprisingly, he was not one of the three stars. And then Chris Versteeg, a goal and an assist. So he was really good as well. Um, but there were some other positives to their game. Mike Weaver had eight hits in the game. Um um, Tom Gilbert, five shots on goal, so he had a lot of shots, and it's just a great game all around for the Florida Panthers. Now let's talk about the Pittsburgh Penguins side of things. Each of their goals coming from guys just getting their first of the year, starting with Evgeny Malkin. Yes, he did not have a goal up to this point. <laughs> Evgeny Malkin assisted by Bo Bennett. That would tie the game at one. Excuse me, okay, I, Craig Adams, actually, for him, it was his third of the year. But, yes, Craig Adams would tie the game at two, assisted by Tanner Glass and Joe Vitale. Kind of seems like a first, though, considering it's the fourth line getting it done. Uh, <laughs> and then that would tie the game at two, and then later in the game, Pascal Dupuis would get his first of the year, assisted by Sidney Crosby. <laughs> and, again, Jeff Zadkoff getting his first of the year, and not playing well. 24 saves on 30 shots, an 8-0-0 save percentage. Um, so, he probably won't be getting too many starts in the future. So, congrats to the Florida Panthers. Next, we have the New York Islanders and the Chicago Blackhawks. Uh, the Chicago Blackhawks coming up huge. <laughs> With a 3-2 victory <laughs> in a, what was a very close game. The defending Cup, Stanley Cup champions playing very well. <laughs> For the Chicago Blackhawks, their goals coming from Joachim Nordstrom getting his first of the year and his first goal in the National Hockey League assisted by Nicholas Jalmerson. <laughs> then Jonathan Taves would score his second of the year assisted by Duncan Keith and Brent Seabrook. And then after the Islanders came back to tie the game, Michael Hanzus would get his first of the year for the eventual game winner, assisted by Duncan Keith and Ben Smith. <laughs> Nikolai Habibulin would get his first start of the season and his first <coughs> uh, start in a Chicago Blackhawks sweater since Game 5 of the 2009 Western Conference Finals against the Detroit Red Wings. <coughs> um... <laughs> So, good night for him to be starting with the team he formerly used to start with. 17, he didn't face much, though. 17 saves and 19 shots, an 895 save percentage. Um, <laughs> yep, an 895 save percentage, but look at Jonathan Taves. A goal and seven shots on goal. Was absolutely brilliant, was the number one star of the game. Was a minus one, but that doesn't really matter when you're the first star. For the New York Islanders, again, they were even lucky to get two goals because they were totally outplayed and outshot in the game. Just Josh Bailey would get started up for the Islanders, assisted by Michael Grabner, and then Kyle Oposo would get his first of the year, assisted by John Tavares. <laughs> Kevin Poulin would get the start in goal for the Islanders, and that was his first start of the season, <laughs> um, and he got... Unfortunately, could not get the win. 25 saves and 28 shots and 893 save percentage. So congrats to the Chicago Blackhawks.
Next, we have the Dallas Stars and the Winnipeg Jets in Winnipeg, Manitoba. <laughs> big win for the Dallas Stars by a final score of 4-1. to one. And not only was it a big win for them, but a big night for a particular Tyler Sagan, who not only got his first and both his first and second career goals in a Dallas Stars uniform, but also added two assists. His contributing on all four of the Dallas Stars goals, a four-point night for him, and five shots on goal to go along with that. At a plus two. <laughs> And he even blocked a shot to go along with it. So, big, big night for him. <laughs> really big night. Um, night for him. Um, <laughs> um, for the Dallas Stars, their goals, though, coming from Alex Chison on the power play, assisted again by Tyler Sagan. And Sergey Gonchar. Sergey Gonchar getting his first point in a Dallas Star sweater. Then again, Tyler Sagan would get his first goal goal as a Dallas Star, assisted by Rich Peverly, who's getting his first point in a Dallas Star sweater. He was another piece coming over from the Boston Bruins. And, and, and uh, Jamie Ben, yes, and Jamie Ben would get an assist on that, remembering that Jordy Ben is in the lineup as well. Then Jamie Ben would get his first of the season, assisted by Brendan Dillon and Tyler Sagan. And, and then Tyler Sagan would get his second of the season on the power play, assisted by Jamie Benn and Alex Chiasson. Jamie Benn was also really good, a three-point night for him. <laughs> him. For the Dallas Stars, the bad news, however, is that, is that they would lose their starting goaltender, Kari Lettinen, and that is very bad news. He got the start in goal and was brilliant up until the point he got hurt. Uh, he was gone his way to a 21. He was having a 21 save shutout, but he went down very easily with the injury. Dan Ellis had to come in and he was good too. 22 saves on 23 shots and 957 save percentage. The only guy to get a puck by him for the Winnipeg Jets in the third period, Blake Wheeler would get his first of the year on a power play, assisted by Dustin Bufflin and Tobias Enstrom. Andre Pavlik would get the starting goal, making 27 saves and 31 shots and 871 save percentage. Not a great night for him, but the Jets will move on from it. Again, they outplayed the Stars in the game. They outshot them, but it was... Uh, Tyler Sagan and his stars who would come out on top, but seven shots on goal for Dustin Bufflin and seven such seven shots on goal for Evander Kane, but not enough to power their way to a win. So congratulations to the Dallas Stars and best of wishes to the to Kari Lettinen. And again, Jack Campbell was called up to take his place. And last but not least, we have the New Jersey Devils and the Calgary Flames in Calgary. The Devils still looking for their first win of the year. Not happening. The, Cal the very surprising Calgary Flames development going quick for them so far. Um, <laughs> they come up big again. 3-2 to two, the final score. Where are the Calgary Flames? <coughs> Dennis, the Devils did lead the game twice, but... It was the Calgary power play that powered their way through to victory. Dennis Weidman would get it started for the Flames on the power play, assisted by Mark Giordano and Yuri Hoodler. Then Mark Giordano would score a power play goal, assisted by Yuri Hoodler and Curtis Glencross. And then Sean Monahan, who has been very hot since play, starting to play, scored his fourth of the year, the game winner, assisted by Sven Berchi and Dennis Weidman. Dennis Weidman, a big performance for him. And another big performance for Joey McDonald, who improves to 3-0-1, 19 saves and 21 shots, a 9.05 save percentage, so he didn't have to face much. But still, he's been a big surprise after being a very inconsistent player for a very long time. Big surprise now. Now... For the New Jersey Devils, again, they did take the lead twice. Nice. <laughs> and it came from two guys getting their first of the year. Adam Henrique getting his first of the year, assisted by Damian Brunner and Andy Green. And then Dinus Zubris would get his first of the year, assisted by Travis Zajac. Martin Brodor <laughs> would get the start in goal. 
And he was actually okay, not great. 26 saves and 29 shots and 897 save percentage. The Devils still looking for their first win of the year. They are one of the only two teams in the NHL, along with the Buffalo Sabres, to not get their first win. Now you got to wonder, who is going to get their first win of the season first? The New Jersey Devils or the Buffalo Sabres? They will be competing with each other for that. Now the with this it going into last night's action, the Buffalo Sabres would have their opportunity. But we'll get into that in the next video. As now we move on to this day in hockey history from October 12th. In 1921, uh, Czech Republic, uh, Czech Republic, uh, Czech Republic forward Yaroslav Yaroslav Drobny was born uh, on October twelfth. Was was the vi October twelfth was the day, the very day in nineteen twenty one where Yaroslav Drobny of the Czech Republic was born. This is a guy who had won a gold medal on the World Ice Hockey Championships in 1947 and a silver medal on the Olympic Ice Hockey Tournament in London of 1948. And to top that off, he also won the Wimbledon in 1954 in his emigration as a representative of Egypt. Um, he is both a member of the, not of the International Ice Hockey Federation Hall of Fame as well as the International Tennis Hall of Fame. So, a Hall of Famer of two sports, Yaroslav Drobny, a native of the Czech Republic, he will be very much remembered to, as a hero to many of the Czech Republic and Czechoslovakian era, those who come to represent that time. Okay, folks. That'll do it for episode 71 of Hockey on the Spot, but don't go away. Episode 72 coming up in just a bit. So this has been Hockey on the Spot, Brandon Barrenfeld. I'm Brandon Barrenfeld. See you guys in a bit. Have a great day.